don't they bring it up inside the building? It's my yoga center. I'm on there. Yeah, maybe I guess we're recording. Sorry. Let me go with you. Don't be on the way out the door. I lost my agenda. Wake everybody up and I'm not ready. I call this meeting order for the Board of Trustees of the Town of Buena Vista. Can I have roll call, please? Mayor Lacey. Here. Trustee Fay. Here. Trustee Lucrezzi. Here. Trustee Rowe. Here. Trustee Swisher. Here. And Trustee Bulky. Here. Thank you. Will you all please rise and join me in? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. I please, I remind you to please silence your cell phones or turn them off. Next, we have a proclamation for the Historic Preservation Month, May of 2022. Whereas the National Trust for Historic Preservation established this celebration in 1973 to promote historic places, instill community pride, encourage heritage tourism, and illustrate the social and economic benefits of historic preservation. Whereas the Buena Vista Historic Preservation Commission established in 2016 is a group of nine town trustee appointed members who focus on ways to protect, promote, and advocate for the town's history and the places that make Buena Vista special. Whereas telling the town stories and protecting the associated places allows everyone to appreciate Buena Vista even more. And whereas historic preservation gives our town another important dimension and shows we honor our heritage. Whereas thousands of people participate annually in preservation month celebrations and the Buena Vista Heritage, excuse me, Buena Vista Historic Preservation Commission is proud to launch its inaugural local celebration of May as Historic Preservation Month. And now, therefore, I, Duff Lacey, Mayor of the Town of Buena Vista, do proclaim May 2022 as Historic Preservation Month and call upon the people of Buena Vista to join their fellow citizens in Colorado and across the United States in recognizing and participating in this special observation. Thank you all. Next, we have the agenda adoption. Additions, deletions, and I believe, Philip, should I read that addition? Do I need to read that? Um, I have it right here. If you... Okay, and I've got the recommended that came through the email. Yes. That'd be the same thing? Yep, that'll be okay. it. Uh, we would like to add to the end of the meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, an executive session to consider the purchase, acquisition, lease, transfer, or sale of real or personal property or other property Pursuant to CRS section 24-6-402, paragraph four, subparagraph A, concerning the potential sale of city real property. I'd like to add that at the end of the meeting. Any questions, comments? Any other additions, deletions to the agenda? Not from staff. Okay. So I would make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I'll second. I have a motion and a second further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Next is consent agenda. Questions, comments on consent agenda? I would like to point out and recognize those people who are stepping forward and, and assisting the town uh, when it comes to our advisory groups. In this case, uh, reappointing Ryan Cole and Lois Walton as regular voting members, and Ben Carell and Don Dennison as alternative members, and Colleen Fitzgerald and 
as a voting member in appointing Jonathan Litweiler as voting member of the Trails Advisory Board. Without um, all of these people stepping forward, things wouldn't happen in town. So it's very, I, I think we should always recognize them when this comes up, always. Thank you all very much. Any other questions on consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you. Second. Second for Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I mean, you know, what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can hand them out if you want. I, I'm all good. <laughs> yeah, I think if you want to start, uh, Mayor Lacey, you can. We have one here for. Uh, you can do. Uh, Mr. Volpe. This guy here. And, uh, and we'll go from there. See what happens. Then we move forward or backward. <laughs> we'll figure it out. He presents you. <laughs> Dave Duff, we appreciate you. Come on, man. <laughs> I know. Spelled it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, Duff, we're really going to miss you. And I want to thank you on behalf of the board and the whole town um, for having given us 12 years of your life. You've been a trustee for eight years and mayor for four. And during that time, good things have happened. And, you know, you are largely responsible for those good things, including um, Collegiate Commons, where 38 families, you know, who before could not afford housing. Now they have a, a very good place to live. Um, you were involved, I know, heavily in the Unified Development Code, which is allowing for more development right here in our town. Um, uh, the uh, town staffing has stabilized and, and um, you know, has um, upgraded. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, the uh, Chaffee County Fire has been contracted to, to service us and, and the fire station sold. The airport has been developed and revenues built out there. Um, the uh, police department building has been selected and, and planned. So the, I mean, this, the, lit, the list goes on and on and on. The Boys and Girls Club collaboration is, um, is developing and the skate park is improved out here. We can see lots of activity. Um, Main Street has just come alive with, you know, with the uh, uh, changes in the traffic patterns and and uh, the street lighting and um, the new high school and middle school were built. So um, uh, I just want to thank you. You've you've just given us a whole lot. Thank you. All right, hold it up. There you go. There you go. All right, Libby, you ready? There you go. Nice. I just want to say one thing before this one takes over, and I think you're in good hands. Um, none of it could have happened without what you see here. Uh, staff is incredible. And uh, if you'll listen and pay attention, they can guide you. They can help you out very much so. And so I appreciate all of you very much. Thank you. I guess I've got a minute because we got to swear in. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Paula take for that so does. I do. Let's see. We need Gina <laughs> and Cindy, Libby, and Mark on the screen. Can you guys can you guys hear me? 
Yes. And it's Sue. 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 Oh, Sue. <laughs> 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 Where would you like? Oh, me? we all get to come in the mirror seat. We all get to come oh, out here. Yeah, no hiding behind the table. No. Yeah. I was told there was. <laughs> Do I just hang out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you awkwardly so sit behind. You awkwardly sit behind yeah. everybody. <laughs> all right, everybody. We all here. And Mark, are you there, Mark? Yes, I am. All right. Okay. I'm going to read the oath, and in the different spots, you're going to need to fill in your name in your office. Okay. And it's up to you if you want to hold up your right hand or not. So whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. I. I. I and go ahead and say your names. Gina. That's it. Mark. Let me say. Do affirm that I will support the Constitution. Do affirm that I will support the Constitition of the United States. Colorado, state of Colorado, the laws of the state of Colorado, the laws of the state of Colorado, ordinances of the town of Buena Vista, the ordinances of the town of Buena Vista, and will faithfully perform the duties of the office, and will faithfully perform the duties of the office of mayor, trustee, upon which I'm about to enter. Upon um, which I am about to enter to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Now I need some signatures. Libby. Sue. You don't get the C mark. There's two copies. Can you guys see me? No. Okay. I can hear you though, Mark. <laughs> I have tears in my eyes. This is they for the right reasons. I mean, are you guys forget that? I have an envelope. We all know that I'm the crier in the crew. I'm learning. <laughs> Switching you know, yeah. <laughs> around. Let's see. Sue? Mayor. Oh, nice. Let's see. Hey, Sue. Hey, Sue, you don't get to sit there anymore. <laughs> I'll see. There we go. All right. We got. I got. I did it over Zoom before. <laughs> Cobb. Mark, we're missing you. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm here. But, uh, <laughs> must be dark where you are. <laughs> it's in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, are you on your town issued laptop? Yes, I am. There's a little slider for the video. And where is that located? It's the, the top center of the screen. Oh, let me see him. It's going to come alive here, but. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I'm working on it. I've got my tech lady here. Where is it again, Michael? It's a it's a camera cover or the top is. center where your camera is. It should should just slide left and right. Oh, it has a list of people who have signed up for public comment, and there's one name on it. <laughs> so, Gene Buster, would you like to? Uh, Stand up and and make your comments. We'll just leave that thing there. Okay. <laughs> Please give us. Way anyway. Yeah. Dean. Dean, would you start out by giving us your full name and your address, please? Well, it's in this. 
My name is Juanita Jean Buster, and I live at 826 South Gunnison, Marina Vista. I've been there for 34 and a half years. Okay. Good evening, and I hope you can hear me better than I could hear some of these people. <laughs> and you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's my privilege to thank all who have served in elective office for your commitment to public service and democracy and to congratulate the trustees and the citizens of Univista for selecting qualified folks to help our town move forward in a thoughtful and responsible way. I've watched it happen. <laughs> I represent the League of Women Voters of Chaffey County, whose mission is to empower people and defend democracy. You are contributing to that goal. In the past four years, our chapter has grown by over 50 members to 120 members from all stripes, Republican, Democrat, libertarian and unaffiliated. We invite any and all of you to join the league, which is over 102 years old. In my, I'm 94 and I don't mind telling my age after I'm 90, but before that, you got to guess. <laughs> and I've been a member for many years. We're not for women only anymore and have many male members. We take positions only on issues we have studied and we never ever endorse a candidate. Did you know that? We do not endorse a candidate. And with help, Oh, I can't read that. <laughs> Lean on this. But you know what? I couldn't see over the top. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I usually don't shake. And I usually am not embarrassed in front of the crowd because it used to be a singer. But... <laughs> anyway, today Susie called me. Where are you, Susie? She's been, she has given us some of the background for the former mayors that are women and so forth. But today she wanted to add to the, to the um, fact that Lou Wade in 1894, one year after Colorado women won the right to vote, she became a council, person, council member. And she lived till 1945. I don't know if anybody here would remember her or not. Anyway, and that Susie Kelly's always there to give you with any help you need about history. She loves to do it and she loves to share it. And she's the one that shared the town has had only three previous female mayors, Maggie Melker, Susan Bristol, and Kara Russell. Libby Fay will be the fourth when she's sworn in. Congratulations. I know a lot of people personally, and I know Libby. Uh, anyway, <laughs> often until the last 10, 15 years, nearly all trustees were men. This upcoming council and its mayor will make history. For the first time, nearly all elected representatives from Puna Vista will be a majority of women. That's exciting. <laughs> My point of view. <laughs> Tonight, we're simply recognizing some history and congratulating Libby Fay and Sue Cobb, who are two members from our League of Women Voters, on their election to the BV Trust of Board of Trustees. Thank you all for your service. We wish you the best 
going forward. Thank you, Jan. Okay, uh, Philip, I think we're up to the staff reports. Oh, I have to. Oh, no. Boring <laughs> <laughs> no. administrator report. Well, congratulations, you all. It's very exciting. Um, I echo a lot of the public comment. We're excited about uh, this new board and staff and look forward to working with you all. So, uh, likewise, get going here. Mark, sorry, we still can't see you, but we can hear yeah. you. So yeah. I'm in whenever you need to. I'm, or, I'm already failing and I'm not even there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in my report, uh, uh, a few things you'll see there again, trying to keep an ongoing list of things that are happening overall. But uh, I've highlighted some of the key updates from, from last meeting. So if you have any questions, specific questions, feel free to ask. But I wanted to take this opportunity. We are we have another, um, I guess, another significant change happening uh, for town. Uh, Mark Doring, behind me here, uh, has uh, has been on staff for probably a little over six and a half years now, um, serving as our uh, leadership position in the town as our principal planner, and uh, Mark has. Uh, been a huge part of our, of our team, of our staff, and has been um, a, a huge part of a lot of significant projects. And, and uh, Libby actually touched on a lot of those uh, when we went over things that happened during uh, trust or, uh, Mayor Lacey's time. But uh, Collegiate Commons, I did put these in here, but Collegiate Commons, uh, Mark, Helped uh, uh, resuscitate that a few times and <laughs> see, it, just a few. see it through, um, and 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 help turn it into an amazing, uh, an amazing project uh, as a built project and not just a, the whole two, 2018 UDC rewrite. Was another thing that Mark was very instrumental uh, as part of that. Uh, getting the historic preservation commission as an ongoing process and, and a new commission that is integrated into the town process. Uh, Mark has done so much behind the scenes with, with that um, amazing group of volunteers. And I know they would echo that as well, and they have. Um, a lot of the uh, streetscape and, and things that we've seen happen in recent years on East Main Street Mark has been um, kind of at the heart of that, working with the uh, the businesses and property owners that have been redeveloping and developing new. Um, yeah, been a huge part of that. So, Mark, thank you very much for your your time, and uh, we wish you we wish you well. Thank you. Um, so let's see, anything else I wanna highlight here. Um, we, so we did sign the final paperwork this morning on the sale of the fire station. So milestones continue. We will, com uh, ev everything will be complete this Thursday and town will receive the proceeds from that sale and they will go into our general fund fund balance. So we're excited about that. And let's see. I think I'll just actually stop there and let you ask any questions if you have any questions about any of the other updates there. There's a few, but happy to dig into anything that the board would like to, like me to. Uh, it's probably not the right time, but I also wanna thank Mark for all his work. Um, as a new trustee way back when I was in 2016, 17, I, I learned a lot on the fly from Mark in those those night intensive sessions of the UDC. And Mark <laughs> was very animated and excited when we had his undivided attention to learn all the nooks and crannies about development code. So it was a huge, huge undertaking that he took with that and also with all the other projects that you mentioned. And 
you'll be missed, but what you've done here will definitely be here for a long, long time to come. Thank you. Hey, Philip, this is Mark talking. Yes. Uh, could you scroll down a bit? I, I can't see all your ongoing projects. Um, um, was there something in there about the three mile plan we were going to look at again? Um, did you have it on there? For um, I think it might be in the planning report. Oh, okay, I'll wait for yeah. that. I just had a comment. I just that. had a comment yeah. about that. Okay, thank Absolutely. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Philip. Right. Michelle, town treasurer. Thank you, new mayors and new and continuing trustees. My report is on page 35 of the packet. Um, shameless plug for the transparency website and the budget book URLs. Um, you can actually click on them in the packet and it'll take you to the clear cut sites. Um, So I have filed the ARPA report. That is the money that we received through the American Rescue Plan. Um, our first report was is due on April 30th. And I did file that this morning. We are, I, I put in the report that we're going to spend 100,000 of that money um, on the Car uh, Carbonet Street project as an affordable housing project. Um, and the remaining 620, et cetera, et cetera, thousand um, dollars on the water plant <coughs> filtration project upgrade, upgrade project. Um, so that is, is a done deal. We were compliant with that report. Then the total sales tax for February came in um, at $324,000. There's a comparison from with that to the February of 2021 and 2020, February 2021 actual and the 2022 budget along with um, variations and change in, in percent and dollars. And the next two grids are uh, comparing remote and local against 2021 for the same period. Um, and then I have a listing of uh, expenditures over $2,000. And I have on page 37, the bar graph that shows the progression of the sales tax uh, receipts for the last few years. And I will be happy to take any questions. Um, this is not a question, but a comment. Um, in January, our sales tax was slightly less for 2022 than it was in 2021. Correct. So I'm relieved to see that it is not less again in February. Correct. It hasn't caught up year to date um, to the budget, but uh, if the trend continues, we will be catching up to the budget in the next few months. Is, I know we've talked about this many times, but the Moat sales tax is online sales, correct? Is that where it comes from? Like if it's online sales, yes. So if I order on Amazon, that's where that tax comes from? Remote it implies outside of Colorado for Colorado definition. But to us, remote is even Kohl's or Macy's or some uh, someplace that's not here in town or in the Valley. Okay. So because it is online sales. Do you see that as being a trend of the first two months or below of what it was last year? Do you think that? I, I, I think what's happened here um, is that when we unveiled the tracking of this, 
Um, shortly after that was the 2020 pandemic and everybody was ordering everything online. Right. And the brick and mortar here in town was suffering uh, because of the pandemic. I think what you're seeing now with the remote being lower than the local is uh, a recovery as far as people getting out and buying stuff here, people coming here and buying stuff here, um, that it's, it, it's, it's a good thing. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Any other questions for Michelle? Thank you. Thank you. And the planning director, Joseph. Good evening. Hi. Uh, Mayor, trustees, thank you all for, for being here and for your service. Uh, it, it's truly inspiring. Um, my report is on page 38. Uh, I won't spend any time on the numbers. Happy to answer any questions on those, but I did want to highlight um, a couple of the other kind of narrative things. First, with the Planning Commission, um, there are, I've mentioned this a couple of times before, but there are a few different um, proposed code changes that are being uh, considered by the Planning Commission, have been considered by the Planning Commission and are coming uh, your way, we anticipate uh, May 24th. Um, so a variety of them are, are minor in nature, um, and a couple of them actually relate to number two, which is a historic preservation commission. Um, at your March 8th work session, you all gave direction for the commission to work on uh, with staff a way to make review by the commission mandatory for any projects happening within the mixed use Main Street Zone District. So we've been working on that. Um, the Planning Commission has reviewed the associated code changes that will affect the Unified Development Code, which is Chapter 16 of our code. Um, the, those changes, along with proposed changes to Chapter 19 of our municipal code, uh, will come before you, uh, we anticipate, on May 24th as well. Um, so I uh, wanted to call your attention to those. <laughs> Scrolling down a bit, um, I won't go line by line on the various cases that we have before us. A quick reminder, as always, in our code, uh, the board has um, the right and the sort of authority to, quote unquote, request to call up any site plan reviews that are happening. Um, not that I'm trying to get you to do that with any of these necessarily, but I just want to remind you that um, for our code, we do have that authority to do that. Um, we have a brand new project page coming to my BV over the next week. Uh, it's called History Lives Here, and it's a, it's a page dedicated to the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, they will be helping to maintain that page and uh, use it to uh, help further their goals. So we're excited about that. And we have reached, um, as of today, over 770 registered users on that site, which is very exciting. Continues to be a very strong tool. I mentioned this last time, uh, the Carbon Street project um, is continuing. Uh, we, as under your guidance, launched our public out outreach and input campaign um, at the end of March. So far, we have met with adjacent neighbors, with general adjacent neighbors and uh, specifically collegiate common residents in design threats and community meetings. <clears throat> Sat down with uh, South Maine to brainstorm and we continue to meet with stakeholders. Um, coming up this next Monday evening is uh, both an open house a factory produced farm unit uh, in the farm and a, a public design threat here for community members. So we encourage both the board as well as the broad public to, to attend those, those pieces. Finally, um, I think this is what Trustee Jenkins was referring to um, on number eight down on page 39. Um, just a, a real brief looking forward section. I'll probably try to keep this consistent in my reports for you all um, and update it accordingly. Um, obviously, with our with the departure of Mark, um, we are looking to um, fill a vacant position in the planning department. Uh, so that will be rolling out over the next uh, number of weeks. You'll see that announcement come. Um, and then broadly speaking, as we look forward over the next few, few months and, and into the next year, we want to ask the question about how does the planning department continue to play a strategic role for the town um, and helping to build the overall capacity across departments. So that's part of what we're thinking about as we're thinking about staffing moving forward. 
Um, and then there's there's a lot of uh, long range and big conversations, um, I think, that are, are needing to be had and coming. And so one of the ways that we're thinking about those is in three major chunks. As you all know, the Three Mile Plan is a state mandated document that we have to update every year. And it details various areas around our, our municipal boundaries and how we want to uh, think about those areas. So we're, we're um, looking at diving into that Three Mile Plan um, and using that as a catalyst for uh, kicking off a comp plan update process. Um, really picture, asking the questions, uh, where are we going, who do we want to be, uh, what does our town look like uh, in the future, um, wrestling with those. And then uh, next year after that comp plan update is finalized, uh, we're looking to revisit and uh, kind of do over our 2004 transportation master plan. Um, a few <laughs> things have changed since 2004. And so in light of our three mile planning conversations, uh, our comp plan and then the invigorated direction that will give us, uh, we want to use those as a launching point for uh, bringing that transportation master plan up to date. Um, so with that, I will um, be done. Happy to answer any questions. Yeah, Joseph, this is Mark. Uh, uh, getting back on the three mile plan um, thoughts. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, um, I just I just want to encourage the board moving forward to really nail down what our thoughts are as far as growth uh, related to that three mile plan and what areas we want to see that. Um, I want to make sure staff has a clear um, idea of where we want to grow as far as the town. So in the future, if we do have more decisions, you know, we're a little more clear on where we actually want that development to happen and just pay more attention to that comp plan and, and redefine that and make that a little more specific. And that's it. Thank you, Mark. It'll be good to see you in person. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm I got all dressed up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Joseph Typel? Okay, Sean, looks like you're up. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, trustees. Um, I have a lot in here, um, so I, if I if I skim over something or if I don't cover it, feel free to. Um, um, Stop me, or or we can we can get back to it after my report. I also have probably a few things to mention that that are in this report. Um, for a refresher and for the new trustees, I could do a little bit better job on my graphs, and I just wanted to kind of clarify the units of measurement. So um, we have um, three years there: 2020, 2021, and 2022. And the small column is. Uh, um, the the water that we that we fill and the larger column is the water that we what we produce. So those units are measured through our billing statements and our master meter at the water plant. And those units are actually million gallons. So that would be six point eight one million gallons and ten point three eight one million gallons. And so you can kind of look at this um, chart and and kind of see you know some of the trends or or no trends. And sometimes it's just baffling, possibly because we've had some a lot of weather in, in, a, in a month, or maybe because we had um, less leaks happening that year, but um, you'll see these uh, reports. And if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask me and um, I'm happy to answer them the best, best of my ability. Um, in this report, we always kind of look at uh, a couple different numbers here as far as production and the master meter. So in 2022, you can see um, you know what we the master meter numbers are in, a, in that other table down below, and we kind of I take the uh, the difference between that and I and I provide the unaccounted uh, usage and there's there's a lot of factors that go into that. Sometimes it's billing and sometimes it's accounted water that's metered that just isn't billed yet. Um, but then I also provide the Ivy League report and some of the fill station construction water um, combined with some of the usage that don't get captured in our billing. Um, metering, um, I, I can give you a, a better fit, for, a feel for what our unaccounted totals are. And so you can see the known losses that we have at Ivy League 
combined with the fill station use and the construction water and the filling stations, um, we had about 16%, which is actually a little bit higher than um, the last several months trends. And uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that, but that's still a pretty manageable number based on the, the amount of water that we're producing um, this time of year. So, and yeah, everybody's probably getting ready, start getting ready to water their yards. Although that snow that we had yesterday, we'll, we'll slow that down a little bit. Um, um, one thing I don't have in, in my report is I'd like to recognize uh, our, our water staff um, um, or, or surround yourself it really, really always comes into play with, with uh, the people that uh, I get to see and work with every day. Um, anyways, uh, I just wanted to recognize that uh, Joseph Pedri, um, always looking to level up on certifications for, for water, uh, passed a pretty tough uh, level exam uh, this week. And so I just wanted to recognize that, um, that we have teams that are always growing and, and honing their skills. Um, um, so uh, good job on Joe. And it, it's, it's something that we, we really like to see. And I'm really, really uh, uh, impressed with the, 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 the work that he does and, and his level of commitment. Um, and talk a little bit about this aqua backflow uh, cross connection services just a little bit. So it's uh, as part of our uh, regulatory requirements, we're, we're required to do a lot of things to uh, protect our community and, and health. And this is a component that we've been um, kind of kicking the tires on and we've approached it a few different ways over the years. Anyways, this year we're kind of doing an experimental um, tracking service with uh, it's, um, with Aqua Backflow, and and they provide the uh, the bullet point items for for our community. And I just wanted to kind of get into that just a little bit. Um, I can't always seem to provide accurate information when I'm writing these, and I think about the the things that I wish I would have put down there. But um, just for clarity, um, these are commercial water tap connections mostly, so these are non single family connections, um, and that's part of the. Uh, the, the state requirement that we actually identify these types of water connections in our system. And there's probably um, 200 plus testable devices within our system. And, and it's, it's been tough because of a lot of things that have happened these last few years, but also because of how busy our community is. Um, we've, we've done great in, in, in the ways of staying in compliance and not having any violations, but it's been challenging um, every year um, with different methods and, and our staff is, is really diligent about trying to get this done, but a pretty minimal investment to experiment with this effort and to see if this is something that um, helps us out. And, and, and um, it's, it's a real minimal investment for us to, to see if this could help us. There's a, a few number of, a lot of communities throughout the nation are using this um, um, and, and, um, and in Colorado as well. And this is something that um, Salida has been doing for a few years and it seems to have some good feedback from the communities that are using it. So we're gonna go ahead and, and, and see how it goes for us. And, and these are just notices that will be sent to people that have, um, that are in our system that either have testable devices or maybe they're new developments that are, are, are gonna be having testable backflow devices. And what a testable backflow device is, it's just uh, um, a, I'm probably saying it wrong, it's actually an assembly is what it is. And so it's a mechanical assembly that's in place, usually near the water meter that keeps the house water from getting back into the, to the water supply based on um, some of the vulnerabilities that um, are industry standards. So um, restaurants are typical, obviously, like a mortuary and places like that, sprinklers. Mm -hmm things like that would be would be on that list. So um, hopefully that helps us out. But I, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, some of you might have testable devices and possibly be seeing some of these notices coming your way. We're re really right now, what we're working on is kind of massaging the letter to identify uh, our community and um, the regulations Colorado has and the regulations in our ordinance. Um, so anyways, um, thanks for letting me kind of bore you with that. I, I wanted to share it. it, it it's some, something that's really important and really, really interesting to see for me how, how this works with these guys. Um, uh, the sidewalks and uh, on Main Street, if you walk down town today, you probably saw some dust flying everywhere. So 
Um, we are actually doing the grinding um, this week um, for the, the trip hazards and um, uh, stone leveling. So we're working on Main Street and we're also probably gonna be down in South Main as well. So there's not a lot down there, but there's a lot more on Main Street. So we're working on, on the stone leveling and um, there's quite a few trip hazards on Main Street. Not every sidewalk is a candidate, but we have quite a few that are. So that should be wrapping up um, Wednesday, Thursday this week, I believe. Um, while we're doing that, we're also doing some sidewalk replacements on Main Street. So we replaced the sidewalk on um, um, at near the Collegiate Peaks Bank site, just south of there. It was some failing sidewalks that was uh, sprawling and uh, we replaced that, and, and right now uh, you probably have seen the the, the the missing sidewalks in front of the JP County Times. Uh, we'll be wrapping that up this week and and moving on down the road. We we also replaced a uh, a section at the BB Square um, last week too, or the week before last week. Uh, I'm really really excited for our parks team. We've we've um, had a great spring. Um, Ryan and his team are doing an amazing job. Um, he's got a really, really talented staff this year. Um, I'd like to recognize, yeah, you know, Chris and, and Ryan and Allison for, for their, for their skill sets and, um, the, the, the difference that they're making this spring. Uh, we have a lot to do and can really see that, um, their, um, their efforts are, are noticed. Um, anyways, um, uh, Ryan, Ryan had, uh, a few things happened with some of the infrastructure that was installed in South Main this winter. So there was some boring that was done and some of his irrigation was uh, was hit with that. So uh, we turned on our sprinkler systems to, to uh, you know, get the water going and start watering our grass. We found an area where, um, where that was impacted and he's moving forward with that, uh, resolving it in a pretty effective way. Um, there's a list of some of the things that we're working on with the parks. Um, facilities wise, we, we have, we've received um, two bids for the community center roof replacement. Obviously the, uh, the roof needs to be replaced and we'll be moving forward with, with, with Norm to, to see what direction we go with those bids and the quotes. But it looks like we're, we're pretty close within our range. Some of the prices um, and a lot of things have gone up and this is an area, um, but it looks like we were pretty close with what we budgeted for. Um, Norm also got the Knox box installations complete. Um, he built those things with some stands. They're very robust and they look really, really nice. Um, we, we had some issues uh, probably last Friday, um, kind of preliminary. We were looking at public works roof. There were some things that were happening there, but it looks like probably the wind that happened on Friday, Friday did a little bit more damage. So we'll be up there assessing that, but it um, looks like we will have some repairs to do and possibly um, a 2023 roof replacement project here at Public Works. Um, I, I'm, I have a lot going on here. So I'm going to just, and I've been talking to you for a while and I know you have a big night. <laughs> I don't want to jump down to the public notice, if you don't mind. Um, again, if you, if you want me to, 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 to let you know or talk about something that I skip over, feel free to reach out. But, um, you know, the, the public notice, I, I really kind of stepped into it by not providing, you know, the dates, but that's going to be at the May 24th um, Board of Trustees meeting in May at 7 p.m. And, and if you all have experienced this, and a lot of you have, so this is part of our state revolving uh, fund loan component where, where, we, where we share our project with the community here and so what we're you know what we're going to be looking for is um, you know um, you know informing the public of what we're doing with the with the water plant expansion project um, and and you know getting the public's input on it uh, whether it's it's written or oral so we'll have that set up on the agenda um, at the last meeting in May for you um, for you all anyways thank you and um, yeah um, um, Mayor Lacey, um, thanks for um, what what a great mayor, and I, I really appreciate you know your the way you handled yourself, and um, I, I've been pretty lucky 
um, to have um, the team assembled that 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 we've had. So um, um, I'm looking forward to working with with the new board and 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 uh, and our new mayor as well. So um, thank you for your time and and, and your commitment. Thank you, Sean. Um, I have a couple of questions. With the uh, Aqua Backflow program, um, has that already been built into your budget? Yeah, we, we have some operating costs that allowed for that. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's under $2,000. That's great. And uh, with regard to the wind, it seems like you had just done a lot of uh, tree trimming um, before the heavy wind hit. And it sounds like maybe you'd, the only damage was to the roof at Public Works. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. And I think what happened here is I think that the the, the wind pulled off um, some of our metal sheeting uh, and probably loosened some screws. So hopefully, you know, we can get through this year. But um, um, Norm's been bringing in some consultants to kind of identify you know, um, if this needs to be a capital improvement project for 2023 and just so happens that, yeah, we get um, some pretty high winds as of late and, and a couple inches of snow falls on it, foot and a half maybe. And uh, yeah, <laughs> see the, the, the repercussions of that. So um, yeah. Well, thank you. You got on top of that snowstorm pretty quickly for you know, the fact that I, I didn't really see it predicted that we were getting a massive snowstorm. Yeah, it was a little more than what was predicted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Anybody else have questions for Sean? Okay, I think we are to the <laughs> recreation department. We have Yes. Hi. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor and Trustees, and and welcome to the new mayor and the the new trustees. Excited to work with you all going forward. Um, Thanks, Shane. You bet. Um, so one project we've had going on in the past week or so, um, we've had the Southwest Conservation Corps in town. Um, they've been working on the first 1,500 feet of the Whipple Trail, um, that project um, that we have going on as well. Um, they camped out in the day use area, um, which seemed to go pretty smooth. Um, we closed off the area for the past week or so. Um, they left town today. Um, unfortunately, they were slowed down a little bit by the, the snow um, on Sunday night. But um, they are, um, a handful of them are going to be coming back um, this week to uh, finish some of the, the bigger projects um, that they had planned to, to tackle um, bef before the weather came in. But um, they were able to get a good um, chunk of the work um, that we wanted them to done. Um, and then we will find out in May um, if we've been awarded the Chafee Common Grounds grant um, and that um, funding will pretty much um, we'll pay for a professional trail builder to, to finish the project and um, get that first 1,500 feet of the Whipple Trail looking um, nice and um, build some permanent um, better routes down to the river and a couple good um, viewpoint um, pullouts to the, um, to the trail there. Um, we've also had um, a very generous donation um, come in in the past couple of weeks. Um, we received a $30,000 donation um, for the McFellamy Park um, stage project. Um, yeah, there's a, a picture right, right there um, of um, a little um, watercolor um, of what the potential stage could look like. Um, so yeah, it was a $30,000 donation from Tom Rawlings who's been um, working with Earl on the project. Um, it was a project we didn't really have a lot of funding available for this year, um, but this um, donation will make it um, a lot more feasible that we can actually get something um, built, kind of move this one up the, the priority uh, ladder because of the, the funding that came in. Um, our, our bids are 
uh, we've got a couple estimations for the project. They're coming in, you know, roughly around or slightly above um, what we have um, for that project with the donation. Um, but oh, at the end of the project, um, they'd like it to be an elevated stage um, with a roof and an enclosed back, um, you know, a slanted roof, um, a little more elevated in the front, slanting back, slanting towards the back, um, as well as some electrical hookups, um, you know, for, for bands and other um, shows to plug into, um, to have some electrical there um, right next to the stage. Um, and we are planning to keep this kind of in the same location in McFellamy Park. Um, on the concrete slab um, near the bathrooms, but um, the sta stage would be um, bigger than the current slab that's out there. Um, so it would be need to be expanded a little bit, but um, would be a pretty nice looking project out there at McFelmy Park um, when that is completed. With that's a very generous contribution. Do we have the, a uh, means of um, thanking him for that contribution? I sure right there would definitely be a piece of that as a part of um the design or the naming um of the project um yeah they're the great uh, so uh, yeah with our pickleball court project um we had an rfp out and we we had two proposals turned in um Earl uh, Leonard from the Peach Peak Pickleball Club and myself um, reviewed those proposals and scored uh, Sport Court of the Rockies um, as the top project. Um, the proposal did come in a little higher than what we had um, budgeted. And then just as the project has developed, um, we found some additional costs that weren't in the original um, budget such as um, moving of a, of a guy wire that's out there in, in the way of the courts. Um, we had to relocate the, tr um, the trailhead a little bit um, as well as um, the electrical connection and um, was not included in the original bid. Um, so we're a little bit over, but over budget, um, but peak to peak is still fundraising and being awarded grants and donations to help fund the project. Um, we are planning to have a solid number of the funding available um, for the project um, at the next uh, trustees meeting. Um, and then we did just receive uh, our signed um, PSA from um, the contractor today. Um, so we'll have that for um, you all to hopefully sign and approve um, at the next meeting on the 10th as well. Um, last thing I want to talk about is um, that we had our um, our one rec department special event, um, Keeping Buny Buena, um, our neighborhood cleanup day um, this past <laughs> Sunday. Um, we had around 200 participants um, show up and, um, and pre-register for the event. Um, you know, we picked up uh, quite a bit of trash around the river park and downtown and um, railroad street and 317 going towards peak fitness. And um, I think we had a group out around the high school, um, just um, very great um, community participation with that event. Um, and then in conjunction with that event, um, Clearview Church also held their um, annual Blessed BV Day. Um, and they focused more um, on the parks and um, specific um, projects that parks had for them. Um, and so they, they cleaned up around the parks and um, I know that group also hit the cemetery as well. Um, so yeah, after, after all the wind last Friday, we went and cleaned up all the trash on, on Sunday. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good timing. Yes. That is all I had. If anybody has any questions. I have a kind of random question with the the Southwest Conservation Corps group that's mm -hmm. doing the um, trail work. Is it is there opportunity for like anybody in town to help volunteer with them at all, or is it strictly like? Because I know sometimes it's you know it's not a public thing, but just curious if there is possible for people to volunteer and help out. 
So there will be a potential for volunteers later in that project and maybe for some potential other projects that this summer. Um, that this specific group um, was, it, they, they were actually using our trails as a little bit of a training exercise. So they were kind of training their group leaders that are gonna go out and lead all their different trail projects that they have going on this summer. So this one, unfortunately, wasn't um, really able to have volunteers because um, you know they were kind of training the people there um, at, while working on the trails, but um, we will definitely have some opportunities coming up where people can get out and volunteer to help out on the trails. Super cool, thanks. Other questions for Shane? Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the first of the business items, which um, is to hear from Adam Adam Paul, who is with the PPG or PCG One LLC retail marijuana store. Um, Phil, do you lead off on this or? You want me to hear you? Either way, or I can, whatever you want to do. I just have a real brief intro, just a review of where we've been since we have, you know, new trustees on the board and things. At a public hearing on November 9th, 2021, the trustees conditionally approved a retail marijuana store license for PCG1 located at 3118, excuse me, 318 Charles Street, owner Sean Davis. One of the conditions included in the requirements was a six month deadline to complete all the requirements, which would be on or before May 9th, 2022. Adam is here tonight um, to provide the board and staff with an update of where they're at in that process. So. Thank you, Paula. Yes. yes, I think we're ready to hear from you. Hey. Mr. <laughs> Mayor, trustees, I'm glad to be here. Congratulations to the new members. Um, Certainly a, a rewarding job, and, and I don't envy you in, in some of those things. So <laughs> thank you for that. And your staff is incredible and has been truly uh, wonderful to work with. And I wish Mark the best. We actually worked together in Lakewood years ago. So good luck to you on your next venture here going forward. So we um, are, are anxiously excited to complete this project, and it's taken a little bit longer than we thought. And if you've seen the movie Money Pit, that seems to be kind of the metaphor for where we've been on this going forward. So if we look at kind of the, the bullet points going down, we have secured our state license and, and that was issued on 11-8-2021. What we were originally trying to do was purchase the property and that's kind of what we spoke about at that previous meeting was um, we found out in the early 90s, I think, that land was not properly subdivided. So we raced to see if we could get it subdivided in time by the end of the year and certainly had no luck getting anybody to, to come and do the surveys and the type of work that we needed. So we switched to a lease opportunity. We have a fully executed lease that's on file now and now we're working on the minor subdivision. The plat is almost done and we're looking for a little bit more field work. So we're aware of where most of the utilities are. Unfortunately, I think there's gonna be a sewer line that we'll have to move because um, if you look at kind of that plot and that, that lot over there, it's a mess. And um, as we continue to peel that onion, we realized that there was an open permit from 2016 on the building from two owners ago. So we're working with the county now to close that. We're gonna run a new uh, circuit to the water heater that should get that back up to code. And then once that's up to code, there was some damage to the wall outside, which will have to be brought back up. And that will allow our change of use to go forward, where we can then submit building plans. We're doing a, a small build out of a kind of a wall and an area in the back. We have provided a, uh, submitted our site plan and uh, of the exterior of the building, uh, the interior building, we've submitted our security plan. And really now we're just waiting on that finalization of the, a survey company they are from denver so making sure they can get up here and then we'll be able to do the the bottom things certificate of occupancy um, from both the, the uh, county the town fire department and so with all that said uh, we would just ask that you grant us another six months to continue to to get this through um, certainly something that we're not we didn't think it would take this long thus far but we're learning a lot in this process. And again, your, your team here has been very helpful to try and get us through it, but things that have been certainly out of our control 
things that we didn't realize, nor did the town realize until we started digging into it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Do you think you need a full another six months to complete it or? I hope not. And, and it's twofold. So there was a tenant in there who we purchased his lease out. So we're paying him and we're also paying rent on the building and uh, clearly not making any revenue for the town or for ourselves. So we're trying to go as fast as we can. It's going to be a little bit, I think, interesting when we really do realize the utility issue and what does that look like. But uh, I would hope that we're in at least half of that, but all we would like to have all of that just in case. We never thought it would we'd be in front of you for this in the first place. Have you have you ever considered backing out of it entirely? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and it is, like you say, it's costing you money, and and right now you have no idea how much money you're going to have to spend on that, um, and it's also costing us money because we allocated a license to to this company and so we can't move we, we you know we we can't really do anything else other than um deny the extension you know we just but but we want it up and running and i'm, I'm just wondering whether you've evaluated the ultimate costs that you might face so and i'll be honest with you right in some ways in this market we got a golden ticket you had two stores and really one actually just one that came up but you also had uh, really limited areas where we could go. So the only other opportunity that we found is now a flower shop uh, on the south end of town. And so even if we were to give it up, I'm not sure where another company would come in and, and try to find this opportunity. The other thing that we're doing is we're cleaning up three lots now. So the, the property owner uh, who owns Casa Sanchez and the jewelry store that bookend us all those lots will be cleaned up for the town going forward also. So there is some benefit, but um, there's also a lot of benefit for us to stay involved. The cultivation facility is, is nearby. Uh, the other two stores, one in Durango, one in Telluride. So this is a, a great fit, I think, for what the company feels. So we're going to keep going. And we put a lot into it when we pay a lot and we want to get it open. Mm. I would just think you'd want to evaluate that possibility personally, but <laughs> it's your choice. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 29, series 2022. I'll second. Is there um, further discussion on this? I think it sounds good. You need a little more time to finish it up, and we appreciate the work you've been putting in, and we look forward to seeing what happens with it. Anybody else? Comments? Questions? Roll call. Trustee Cobb. Yes. Trustee Jenkins. Yes. Trustee Lecrexi? Yes. Trustee Rowe? Yes. Trustee Swisher? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Mr. Hello. Hall. <laughs> okay. So now we will go on to the Boulders subdivision. Planning. Yeah. This is. Okay. We'll let Mark roll, run with it. Thank you, <clears throat> Mayor Trustees. Uh, this is a request on page 51 in your packet. It is from 500 Colorado North. They are requesting a one time 12 month uh, extension of the preliminary plat. The preliminary plat for the boulders was approved on June 25th, 2019. So we're rapidly coming up on the de three year deadline to get a plat recorded. Um, the original owner of the property did not move forward. They uh, sold the property to the applicants tonight, 500 Colorado North, who's looking to take that same plot forward. 
Um, they are working on the engineering to complete it. There is, um, it is the same plat, but there is a slight difference. The original plat was on a piece of property that is shaped like a cereal bowl. So the new owners um, uh, have come forward with a plan that still has the same rights of way and same lot pattern, but they're filling in the cereal bowl so they do not need a lift station. So they have to do that engineering work. And that's what they're working on currently. So they have uh, requested a uh, extension of that per the code, and we bring that before you tonight. Um, with that, I'll answer any questions if you have any. Questions for Mark? So if we give them another year extension, are we saving water rights for this subdivision? Um, the, the water county model, uh, Joseph and Joel, have the, the details on that. So I'll let them answer. Yeah, I mean, um, in our current SFV um, amount remaining, uh, the borders is not in there. Um, so they would need to, uh, before their final plat is, is recorded, pay for their water dedication fee in lieu. And that would be based on the final plat and, and associated site plan, which show 45 single family uh, homes and 45 ADUs. And so we were on that calculation, I think it's around 62, 62 SFB. So they would need to pay that water dedication fee before their final plat is recorded. And at that point, once they pay the fee, then their water is reserved for them. So there is a, a slight risk that between now and then water runs out and can't fill. Okay. Other questions on this? The Boulders project. I have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion Swisher, second Cobb. Roll call vote, please. Um, may I ask Mayor? Okay, I, just as a point of clarification, I know that um, Philip Puckett had shared with me that you were requesting that when I call roll call vote that it be done randomly. Yes, I'd like that. Is that. I just want to see if now is the time that I start that or when do we start that process? So when you're ready. Mayor Fay had requested that instead of in the past, I have always called roll call vote alphabetically and she is at requesting that I now do it randomly. So I'd say start it when it gets really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm a cob. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I know it's yeah. nice. <laughs> so, so, so I just now I, ha I have my little cheat sheet here. Oh, so yeah. I forget anybody. Yeah. And I will say probably in the minutes, I am still going to show them in alphabetical order so that I don't, you know, if that's okay with you, that I don't have to reflect in the minutes who I did first, second, or third. Just that how it was voted as far as those voted yes and those voted no. Good. Okay. Thanks for thanks for remembering that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Roll call vote. Let's see. Let me go to this one. Jenkins. It's on mute. Not ready. <laughs> You're on mute. Mute mark. I was just practicing. Um, <laughs> yes. Swisher. Yes. Roe. Yes. Cobb. Yes. Pretzi. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Okay, now we get to the really argumentative stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what? Philip be free. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so each year the board of trustees appoints the key staff people. Those people um, are Philip Puckett, or they are the administrator, the attorney, the treasurer, the town clerk, and the municipal court judge. 
whoever that person happens to be at the time. So in this case, um, item C asks us to asks us whether to approve reappointing Philip Puckett as the town administrator. I'll make, I'll make a motion. Yep. Uh, but, you, can uh, but, uh, <laughs> you can go. I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have to see the whole resolution or? Okay. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 31 series 2022 um, entitled Resolution of the Board of Trustee for the Town of Benefice, Colorado, reappointing Philip Puckett as town administrator. Thank you. I'll second. Kretzi and Roe. I'll call. Trustee Cobb. Yes. Trustee Swisher. Yes. Trustee Lucrezzi. Yes. Trustee Jenkins. Yes. Trustee Rowe. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next resolution is number 32, series 2022, as to whether we should appoint. Um, the firm of Hoffman, Parker, Wilson, and Carberry as our town attorney. There we go. I'll put him on the screen. Look, there's Jeff. Now. I thought I'd show my face for this one. Yeah. <laughs> is it shot for this? I'll make a so motion. That's <laughs> solution 32, series 2022. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. I'll second it. Fisher Cobb. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> the delay. Yeah. Roll call. Trustee Swisher. Yes. Trustee Jenkins. Yes. Trustee Rowe. Yes. Trustee Lucrezzi. Yes. And Trustee Cobb. Yes. The motion Great. passes. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. The next is resolution number 33, series 2022, entitled a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Buena Vista, Colorado, reappointing Michelle Stoke as town treasurer. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 30, 33, series of 2022, reappointing Michelle Stoke as town treasurer. I'll second. Um, Lucrezzi. Roll call when you're ready. Okay, Trustee Rowe. Uh, yes. Trustee Cobb. Yes. Trustee Lucrezzi. Yes. <laughs> Trustee Swisher. Yes. And Trustee Jenkins. Yes. Motion passes. <laughs> Our treasurer. <laughs> okay, the next is resolution resolution number thirty four, series twenty twenty two. A resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Buena Vista, Colorado, reappointing Paula Barnett, town clerk. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 34. Second. Second. Second, Lucrezzi. Ro Lucrezzi. Roll call when you're ready. Okay, Trustee Jenkins. Yes. Trustee Rowe. Yes. Trustee Swisher. Yes. Trustee Lucrezzi. Yes. And Trustee Cobb. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. Yay. We get to keep Paula. <laughs> uh, okay. The next one is resolution number 35, series 2022, entitled A Resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Buena Vista, Colorado, reappointing Judge Brian Green as municipal court judge. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve resolution resolution number 35, series 2022. Lucrezzi Swisher. All right. Let's see. Roll call. Trustee Cobb. Yes. Trustee Lucrezzi. Yes. Trustee Rowe. Yes. Trustee Jenkins. Yes. And Trustee Swisher. Yes. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Great stuff. Thank you. 
Okay. Now we get to the selection and appointment of a mayor pro tem. And two people have submitted letters of interest for this. And those are Devin Rowe and Gina Lucrezzi. So, um, <laughs> The non-paid <laughs> position. <laughs> Unless you've settled this between yourselves, do you want to make a a statement uh, as to why um, each of you is interested and why you think you'd be the better person to appoint at this moment in time? Um, I guess, yeah. I, I said a little bit in the memo that I sent that you all saw, but, um, you know, I've been on the board since November of 2016. Um, I was appointed for 18 months at that time. Um, and then I was, I've been a trustee since April of 2020. Uh, so I've, I've been here for a lot of different projects, uh, some of which we've mentioned already tonight the UDC Collegiate Commons Baseball Land Swap. Um, I was part of the, the, the steering committee for the fire department. Um, and I feel like I have a lot of experience with a lot of the things that have happened in town. And um, I feel like I can help and support you all um, and be a good liaison between uh, you all and and uh, Ben, this guy over here. Um, and you know, regardless of the outcome, I I am always here for your support and uh, for coffee or a beverage or or lunch or breakfast or anything. So, um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about it. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I guess to say something as well. <clears throat> um, well, hopefully you can't go wrong either way here. I think. Uh, Devin is an awesome guy who's been here and you have a lot more time than I do. Um, so I do have things to learn for sure. Um, but I do think in, in my short time, I've gotten a chance to kind of go through the ringer on, on some unique situations and, and it was a bit of a roller coaster, but, but I mean, that's kind of what we sign up for a little bit, but, um, you know, I just, when I was thinking about the memo, something I didn't really put in there was, uh, you know, my essentially my day job is is working with tons and tons of people and putting on different events, um, uh, shaping partnerships, um, and kind of uh, I guess coming up with creative solutions for all kinds of things that can pop up within this thing I call Trail Sisters, this community I have. Um, you know, when I think of some of that role, if you know. Uh, some of those things tie together. And when put in that situation, you need, you need to, A, you have to be a great listener because you have all kinds of people coming at you with all kinds of different things. You have to understand procedure because it's obviously a criminal uh, situation and there's things to follow. Um, outside of that, you need to be a critical thinker and you have to also have leadership skills. And um, I think those are all things I embody and I believe I could put forward in the role if given the opportunity, um, but you know, at the end of the day, I think Deb and I are both pretty good choices and I'm happy to support whatever the board sees fit and we'll support other Deb and myself or, you know, I'm just happy to be a part and to continue learning um, and be a part of the board and, and this town. So, yeah, this is my speech. <laughs> okay, um, Mark Jenkins. Yes, you still there? that's me. Um, yes, I am. I know that you you were mayor pro tem at a time where you really had to put in a lot of uh, a lot of time, you know, leading meetings and and um, you know the mayor was out of town a lot. So um, I'm just <laughs> you have any reflections on on your time as pro tem? <laughs> Oh, yes. I have a couple of questions for both of them. Um, I guess okay. the first one is, um, is there anything about running meetings that would that you're concerned about? And if there is, how would you handle those specific, you know, 
uh, or is there anything that really pops up as far as that? You kind of cut out on the end there. Um, just as far as, again? yeah, is are there any concerns about, this is a question about running meetings. Um, is there any question or is there any concerns that comes up for either of you about running a meeting? And if what if what are those concerns and how would you handle those? Or have you even thought about that? I mean, yes, of course. Um, personally, concerns um, and what I do as a day job um, is a lot of interaction with folks. I have over 150 local groups, right? And so I have leaders to all these local groups. Um, and we do monthly meetings where it's very much, we have agendas and we go through kind of the procedure of what these local group leaders are supposed to be doing with their membership. Um, within that, there's usually time for feedback and Q and A, if you will, and then coming up with solutions and issues that they might be dealing with. So, um, I don't know, trying to be aware of everybody's time just kind of following the agenda and at the same time, trying to make sure that everybody's voice is heard. I think, I think you just have to be very conscious of um, essentially your surrounding the time you have, but always also being a good listener. But I don't, I don't feel as though there's anything that's you know, necessarily that crazy or scary or something that wouldn't be able to be managed um, personally. Okay. Thank you. Kevin? Yeah, I don't, you know, in running a meeting, I have had some great uh, representation in the past of the previous mayors of seeing how a meeting is run. Um, I also know that if, if I had to run a meeting, I would have the support of our awesome staff to help me uh, with that as well, um, you know, and I guess the only concern I have is I stutter sometimes, but that hasn't stopped me from talking yet. So, <laughs> um, but some people, as I understand, right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't see any issue. I've, I've spoken a lot of for, in front of a lot of people before. And I think being the person that runs the meeting, you also have to, uh, you know, feel the vibe of, what's going on in the room and making sure everyone on the board of trustees is getting a voice and speaking and uh, you know, making sure that we're getting all our questions answered. And, uh, and uh, those are some of the core things as we move along and especially, you know, making sure that we have the time that we need for each uh, different uh, item on the agenda to make sure everything is uh, thoughtfully uh, presented and voted upon. Okay. Well, yeah, have... that's great. Thank you. No, those those are great answers. I just one more thing. It kind of you guys already kind of answered that as far as your preparation for the meeting. But I would just advise to come prepared and you know have a, an outline that you can follow and try not to shoot from the hip because sometimes that can go terribly wrong. <laughs> so, but just, just be prepared as far as, you know, how the meeting's going to run and outline it for yourselves. And uh, that would be my only really suggestion, I guess, moving forward. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Sorry to yep. spring that on you. Oh, no, that's good. No, I didn't give Mark any warning. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the job. <laughs> Nor did I give you any warning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absent there, but. Move to, uh, I put a similar question to you, Libby, just from your experience being mayor pro tem. Um, how often have you had to step in, even if the mayor hasn't always been out of town? Just kidding. But. <laughs> <laughs> On Joel night. Well, you know, Mayor, mayor Lacey was very reliable. Mm -hmm. um, oh. I, he, I think in the whole time that I was mayor pro tem, he missed two meetings maybe, I, and one of them, I was out of town too, so Mark Jenkins had to run it. <laughs> and so he stepped in as <laughs> mayor pro tem pro tem. And uh, um, I signed checks a number of times. And yes. so that's a, a matter of, you know, being familiar enough with accounting to be able to 
review the invoice and see if it makes sense and um, is the amount correct, is the address correct, and and is the categorization you know somewhat correct too. But we have a good accounting department; they do they do well at preparing those checks. Um, also, gathering um, um, trustee comments on the evaluations of the staff at the end of the year. Um, that's an interesting process and and then uh, you know meeting with with uh, the town administrator to talk about those those reviews so um, it's possible that somebody would have to step in and run you know run more meetings I'm certainly going to try to not miss meetings as the mayor <clears throat> Um, never know. I guess the other question I'd have is just we all have other things going on in our lives, have to travel. I know I'm going to miss a meeting in June, but what about for you two? Would you say um, you can be here most of the time or the present, or would that even be a, a factor, I guess? Looking at the schedule for me, I should be here pretty much the entire year. My mom gets married at one point later in August. And so that would be the, the, technically I could be remote, but I don't know if Mayor Pro Tem can do that. At, well, I don't, I don't know if you'd conduct that remotely if, if you weren't there. And, but anyhow, but technically I can make every single meeting, um, assuming nothing catastrophic happens in my life. Sure. <laughs> you know? But um, yes, being there for my mom if, when she gets remarried is something that I would- I would yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll probably be traveling later in the fall to visit family for the holidays. Um, but you know, anytime I'll be away, I'll make sure to make sure to run it by the mayor to make sure that she's planning on being there as well. So, you know, when she's going to uh, the Bahamas or something. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Sandy, anything? Um, pretty much asked, answered. Both, both candidates would be extremely acceptable. Do we want to do a vote, a secret ballot, or do we want to flip a coin? Any My choice? secret ballot might take a while to get there if I have to mail it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Okay, well, we need a way of making it just awkward for them, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yeah. 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 Or someone can make a motion. Or you could make it a one year. You could make it a one year term. To do it for a year and the other do it for a year. Well, we're sitting here looking for somebody's lead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to make a motion if nobody else is going to step up and do anything. Okay, Mark. Go for it, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 make a, I'll make a motion to nominate uh, Trustee McCrazy to be uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Did everyone hear that? I'll second. Discussion? It is hard and it is awkward. <laughs> Did I sign up for this? <laughs> <laughs> I have your signature right over oh, there. <laughs> of course you do, Molly, you got it all. <laughs> She's on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's no discussion. Roll call. Trustee Swisher. Yes. Trustee Jenkins. Yes. Trustee Rowe. Yes. Trustee Lucrezzi. Yes. Awkward. And Trustee Cobb. Yes. Okay. To being mayor pro tem. Congrats. Thanks, Kate. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well.
You fight later if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you'd win. <laughs> I feel like you'd fight dirty, probably. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, guys. Okay. Now, um, Philip has sent out to us at least once, maybe more, a listing of the um, liaison positions. There are some that are not filled. I think we actually do a few minutes on that. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, Mayor Faye, can I make a suggestion? Yes, Mark. Yeah, I think I'll it's a good that. idea. Yeah, just just a just a thought. I mean, it, sometimes it's good, you know, to kind of mix it around and serve on different boards, um, just to kind of get a taste for what everybody's doing. I mean, mm -hmm. every if I, you know, I mean, that's just a suggestion. I mean, we don't have to do that, but uh, sometimes you know, it's good to to move around and serve on different boards. Just just an idea. Thank you. Does anyone want to pull off of any of the boards that they are currently on? I'm not pull off per se, but I was going to talk to Mark privately, but since he's on the intercom, I'm going to ask him now, but I'm going to, uh, the rec board, uh, half yes. the time is at night and half the time is in the morning. Yes. So, 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 so I'll be starting a job soon where I'll be working Wednesday nights. So if you wanted yes. to cover those meetings, that'd be super helpful. I yeah, I'd, I'd be more than willing to do that, Devin, if, if, you know, if that's okay with everybody. I, yeah. I guess I would also like to weigh in. I, um, Mark, are you, you're on water, is that right? Yes, yes. Because I was going to see if anyone was willing to move. I'm kind of interested in about either uh, wreck or trails or even trees. If anyone's considering a move, I would be uh, up for, for assuming those, one of those. I stepped down from the water board and yeah. I would like to stay on the tree board. I understand. Um, I also have a question if we should wait to do this until we have our our next member. Yeah, I think that'd be worthwhile. Just so we don't fill everything up. Huh? Yeah, I think that's a good make call. That decision that is. At our next yeah. meeting. Because we're going to be yeah. appointing a new trustee at the next meeting. So, yeah. So maybe in the meantime, think about if you're on a board and you'd rather step off that board and get on something else or if you have a strong desire to be on on one of them is there an amount of how many trustees can be on is there a limit to how many can be on an advisory board no no i don't think so i think you usually want like at least you're on at least one advisory board. So are you asking if, if you could have multiple trustees on one board? Yeah. Um, oh, I guess that would be like the grouping issue. Potentially. Yeah, I mean, they are public meetings. Yeah, they are True. noticed. Um, True. I, yeah, I, it seems like stacking more than two would, I would yeah. be curious why, but um, I did have a, a good discussion with trustee now trustee Cobb about uh, the potential of kind of attending different just to kind of hear and see what's going on in different areas and I think that's I don't have an issue with that I don't think that would cause any troubles because they are noticed meetings um, Jeff Parker do you have any concern if two or maybe three were to ha happen to attend one of these advisory meetings yeah, I mean, I think ultimately you need to make sure it's noticed as a um, city, uh, I mean, town board of trustees meeting as well, if you're going to have three or more there. Um, you know, I think part of the point was huh. that you don't have your board, a lot of board members at every meeting because you, you wanted to have like a single liaison with a point of contact. It's a little more efficient that way, but there's there's no legal reason why you couldn't do it. And Philip, in, in the case that we were talking about, I was really just um, proposing to attend a, one meeting here and there, <clears throat> excuse me, to just get a feel for the subject matter and the people who are handling it. Yeah. Okay. 
Could we have this as an agenda item in May 10th meeting? Sure can. Thank you. Okay. Um, next one is um, for the trustees to approve the adoption of Re resolution number 36 series 2022, which is entitled a resolution of the board of trustees of the town of Buena Vista, Colorado, affirming those persons who are authorized to sign on town bank accounts. Is this for Paula or you, Philip? Um, well, Michelle, do you want to speak to this? Michelle? Up a little bit. Otherwise, I can. <laughs> you want me to pass it to Mark? <laughs> oh. um, so whenever we elect a new board, we need to update the signatures on the bank accounts. And typically, the checking account which we only have one account now. When I when I started, we had seven and twelve debit card accounts. So um, I've gotten that down to a credit card account and the general operating account. Um, that being said, the bank account requires two signatures for each check, uh, uh, an elected member and a staff member, which the staff is uh, Administrator Puckett and Town Clerk Barnett. And then the elected would be the mayor and the mayor pro tem. And since we do have a few, well, we have an extra, a change out in that because Libby has been a signer, but a signer is mayor pro tem. So we have to put her in as mayor and uh, and then Gina as the mayor pro tem signer. And I believe um, there was quite a bit of, quite a few times where uh, Mayor Faye had to sign in lieu of Mayor Lacey. So um, it's probably... A, a, a duty that I'll bounce back and forth between the two of you. Um, other than that, the credit card accounts, every town staff member has a credit card that they carry on one account for the town. Um, they don't all get to carry it. The, the department heads get to carry theirs. And then if someone it, under the department heads are traveling, um, then they can come and check out their credit card for travel purposes so they don't have to front the travel expenses. And that has worked out really well. Um, so the signers on that aren't really gonna change. The administrators uh, are myself and Philip and Jonna of that credit card account. So that's not going to really change, but we put that on there as well because it's it's last year's form. So it's <laughs> updated it. What she said. Uh. <laughs> <There's my job>. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve resolution number 36. Second. Roll call vote. Trustee Lucrezzi. Yes. Trustee Rowe. Yes. Trustee Cobb. Yes. Trustee Swisher. Yes. Trustee Jenkins. Yes. Great. Thank you all. So, Mayor, if I may, yes. what I will do is take this resolution to the bank, and then I will need fresh signatures from all the signers on uh, fresh signature cards. Um, so, uh, 
Gina and Libby will contact you when we have those signature cards and you can come in and sign them. Um, Michelle, one thing, Libby is going out of town and checks are gonna be signed on Thursday. So I don't know what the timeline is to have those signature cards done so Gina can sign checks on Thursday. <coughs> So um, I can take in the, the signature card, the resolution to get the signature cards tomorrow. So okay. as long as we can get Mayor Faye to sign the resolution by then. Yeah, I can sign the resolution. Yeah. <laughs> Works. All right. <laughs> Okay, now we are at the final item, trustee staff interaction. Um, so this is a time that you can bring up things that are not on the agenda, um, talk with each other about them and, um, you know, give pieces of information you think others would be interested in. So, um, we'll start with the quietest one tonight. All right, you're good. Okay. So, um, the newest one, it's the newest, quietest and the newest. Um, I have nothing particular to say other than I'm really uh, excited to be joining the board. It's a great group of people, and really excited to be working with staff. I think it's a it's a great team that's assembled here, and um, I'm really kind of excited and honored to be part of it. Thank you. All right. Michelle? I'm good. Okay. Philip. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Uh, let's see. I have randomly placed uh, lots of paper in front of you all. Um, there is a little method to that madness. And if it's not clear, I can and try to make it clear. So CML put together a nice little packet to the new trustees. So I believe, um, yep, Gina, you have one. And uh, Trustee Jenkins, we'll, we'll get you yours when you get back. And then okay. uh, when, when the board appoints the open for the open position, we have, we have one ready uh, for that person as well. Uh, so in that, lots of information, I tried to put a kind of a top sheet letter summary in there explaining what's there, a uh, copy of the handbook, a copy of the collective vision statement for the town and filtering questions to uh, reference. And we'll continue to talk more about those tools, uh, the copy of the 2022 budget. And then I created something new that I think I dropped off with everybody else, hopefully, um, but it's a little acronym cheat sheet uh, because we use a lot of jargon and acronyms and everything like that. So it's, it's several pages long, but we, I, I highlighted the ones that we use quite a bit uh, uh, in the town of EV. So just a little light reading there for, uh, for, for reference. Uh, but in that letter, I also kind of pointed you to uh, the town website has a plethora of information, master plans. And within that, I called out the comprehensive plan that's on there, the three mile plan, some of those other things. Um, very helpful. And again, we will revisit those as, uh, as Joseph pointed out in his planning report. Uh, we'll be going over those those documents, those guiding documents more uh, upcoming. And then I just tried to summarize some of the upcoming trainings that we uh, that we're planning. And those, and those things are in the administrator report as well. But we are lining up some training. And uh, if you have any questions about the schedule or the content or anything like that, I'm always happy to discuss as I can. And let's see. CML uh, information they, they provided quite a bit but it, I think it's I think it's good information and again CML is a great resource for the board of trustees and the town overall uh, a great resource for advocacy and training um, and things like that so if you have any questions as you're going through that again re please reach out thank you and on that same topic with the CML um, gathering up in Breckenridge 
a lot of us are going, you know, and uh, I think that we really should um, maybe at the next meeting, trustee staff or, or bring a list of things that you're interested in attending um, so that we don't all gang up and go to the same things because um, there are so many programs and we might as well spread ourselves around. So you gonna, you gonna do the 5k in morning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sure, I'll do it. <laughs> Come run it with me. my bike. <laughs> Is it 5K? Yeah, Thursday morning. Sign up for the call. Okay. You can do that one. Anyway, that should be, you know, not only a nice, nice weekend or a nice part of the week in the mountains, learning opportunity, and then, and then hopefully we can share with each other what we learn. So, um, Mark, during. Do you have uh, anything that you want to say? Sure. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, it's been a long time. I'm moving on for professional and personal reasons, going back to the front range, but still in property here. And I'm like someday come through those doors as an applicant at some point. We'll see. I'll keep checking in on you guys. Um, <clears throat> Not necessarily good with uh, names, but I am really good at numbers, so I'm going to leave you a few. Um, 3.5, that's how many years it took to do the UDC. 3%, that's how much population is in Kaliji Commons of the town's total population. Uh, over 300 houses been permitted um, during my stay. I'm kind of proud of that. Uh, 127 to 3. I that's my estimate of, of records of, of cases that came before you. So pretty good. Only lost a few. I won't go into those ones. Um, 466. That's the amount of sick hours I have um, before. I leave. Uh, so that works out to about 12 weeks. Um, 630, 2022. That's the date River Park Road is supposed to be paved by. <laughs> which would be a very big thing, I think, for this town. Um, dozens of dedicated staff and consultants. I appreciate every moment working through them. It was especially Jeff Parker and his associate, Catherine Sellers. They've saved my bacon more than on one occasion. I appreciate everything that they've done, as well as the... Uh, time staff has put in on other things helping me do my job for you guys. And then lastly, zero is the amount of lawsuits that I've been involved in. How <laughs> <laughs> I leave you with those numbers and that's it. If you have any questions or any comments for me, be happy to swing by town hall, be happy to, to have questions with you before I leave May 6th. Thank you. Mark. Good, yep. I wish you, you the very best. Good luck to you, Mark. Thank you. Joseph? Um, really hard to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just a, a personal thank you to Mark for uh, helping me get my feet wet uh, over these first few months in my role. Um, the only thing I wanted to say is, is I'm excited to say that the uh, permit set and, and um, Guaranteed maximum price bid set for a police station is uh, done and into us today. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, our our uh, CMGC will be working to, to build um, a bid um, on actual subcontractor bids over the coming weeks. So you will hear more about that, I'm sure. All right. Joel. I'll say thanks to Mark too. I know before Mark, we had uh, a planning department that was um, uh, erratic, perhaps. <laughs> still erratic. Um, it's still erratic, but um, I mean, it, it was. Uh, so there's been stability in um, Mark moving the conference quite a bit for the town and the planning department. So um, all those numbers are. Good, great. So thanks, Mark. And welcome uh, to all the new board members and, and good luck. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah.
You've been there, been there, done that, huh? But you came back <laughs> for more. Yeah, but it was back. I kept coming to those meetings. I'm like, where's Joel? <laughs> Devin? Uh, yeah, I had a little bit to say. Um, after the last meeting, I really had a hard time with how it ended and uh, the, the mowing down of the Stackhouse uh, development. Um, I got a lot of emails of people who misinterpreted my what I said, and I've gotten a lot of phone calls and emails and contact from friends, uh, really shocked and surprised on that not going through. And I really wanted to foremost uh, to really thank staff for their hundreds, probably hundreds of hours of work as my computer shuts off, um, especially F F Philip, uh, Joseph in the planning department, Joel, Paula and our town attorney, Jeff, and his cohorts. Um, they put in a lot of time into that. And there's a lot of things that, that our staff really puts a lot of time in. And uh, I think I just wanted to highlight how much time they put into that. Um, also, you know, that proposal, proposals like that one don't come around where private uh, developers really want to help and benefit town. So that was probably why I was so <coughs> disappointed in that. Um, the people that came that were against it were the neighbors of the property and they were about 20, 30 people. And that is not a majority of town when there's a town of 3000. Um, and uh, things are never going to be in the perfect place or have exactly what we want, but if it's improving the lives of the citizens of town, I feel we have the duty to do something about it. Um, as a person in this town who makes less than 100000 a year in rents, uh, it's really disheartening to not have housing uh, go through. Um, it, as we learned previously, people who make 100,000 still can't afford a house here in this town. Um, last fall, I got into a heated discussion with one of my best friends back in New England about living here. And he was, he challenged me that I live in a rich town and that I have no way of building a future here. And I explained my love for this town, the community and how we're working to make things better here. And after, the vote um, against the development. I'm struggling to believe that we are. Um, so I really hope we can continue and really, uh, I took a quote from the town vision is that we envision a community in which all citizens enjoy financial prosperity and can find an affordable place to live. So I just wanted to share a little bit and really foremost, Thanks, staff, for all the work that they made, and uh, um, just to bring our heads to think a lot about the, the decisions that we make here and how they affect everyone here in this town. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the uh, Lucretti. Mayor Pro Tem Lucrezzi. So I was invited to a, um, I guess essentially it's called the Power of We. It's uh, JV County's Women's Entrepreneur. Um, uh, they had a grand opening. Essentially, they just rented a place in Salida at the Palace, but it's for JV County. But um, it's pretty cool. It's a place where essentially uh, you can go to network and share ideas, um, gather resources but just kind of to uh, boost, you know, more uh, women entrepreneurs in the area, just that was kind of unique. Um, and I know there's also, um, forget the, I'm gonna botch the, um, oh gosh. Well, the economic, the ec 
the economic uh, department for essentially grants and federal and state. Um, we had somebody come in, Leslie, who was there to kind of talk a little bit about what people could do for funding in grants. Um, so it was, a, it was a pretty cool opportunity and really nice to see that there's stuff like that around, but granted, I don't know how many people are listening to this, but if there are people in the community that you know are looking into trying to do their own business or, um, or have their own business, it's kind of a neat thing to jump on board. It's not like a cost or anything to join, just cool networking opportunity. So was there a cost for the program that you went to? No, no. Um, in general, we have some training money available, right? For trustees to go to different things. There, there was no, no cost of this or anything. I think um, uh, Commissioner Baker was there as well um, and a few other people. So it was, it was kind of nice to see support from all around just to, I don't know, try to get this kind of off the ground. But anyhow, yes, that's, that's about it. Good. Well, um, thanks for letting me be the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to try to have the board engage in more dialogue, fight with each other if necessary, you know, argue, make your point, um, back it up with uh, data, facts as much as you can. But, um, you know, we do make really important decisions in our role here. Um, so I really want them to be thought about and thought about and, you know, just, Go at it with each other if you if you need to, and I'll try to be comfort. I'll try to be comfortable with the silence too. That is sometimes a tense moment, but um, you know, I, I think we've been a pretty quiet board in the past. We got a little bit better over the last couple of years, but but we've been pretty quiet, and and um, you know, we really should argue and carry on and make good decisions. You know, we, we have some good diversity on the board, which um, is deliberate. And, you know, we got to, uh, we got to choose that. So here we are and, and uh, let's, you know, let's do what's best for the community, but come at it from your, you know, from your knowledge and background and experience. Um, so one other item is there's an election of the hospital board coming up. The election day is May 3rd. You have to vote at the hospital. Sorry? Mr. Jenkins. Oh yeah, Mr. Jenkins, yeah. So oh, yes. uh, with, with the hospital board, um, you may, you know, it's a it's a, a situation where there are four candidates for three positions. I believe you can vote and be in a vista yeah. too. Okay, can you get the you get the but, um, on election day? <laughs> Only on election day. But yes, please, you know, if you at least take a look at it. Mark, oh, Philip. Uh, just a reminder, we do have the exact session on the agenda. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, thank you. Yeah, uh, Mark Jenkins. Did yeah, I'll make it short. Like yeah, I'll make it short and sweet. You know, I always got something to say. Um, yeah, Why congratulations to the congratulations to the new board. Looking forward to serving and having great conversations, uh, like Libby was saying. Um, also, um, just uh, good luck to Mark Doring. We have a uh, quite a history together, and uh, good luck with your uh, your future and where you land. And um, and and saying that. There's one good thing from this all this mark. I won't no will no longer be a pain in your backside. So <laughs> I'm I'm sure you'll appreciate that. And one more concern I have um, getting on the board. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get uh, get along with that new planning director. I'm, I don't know about that kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's it for me tonight. Thank you, Mark. We are going to have an yep. executive session. Yep. Um, and I don't have the wording for that, but um, should we take a five minute recess? That'll be good. Okay. Let everybody. I, oh, I don't know after the way I was treated. I did a last. Yeah. 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 Y
notes on the book. Time wise, I haven't had a chance to. Well, yeah, I would have a, no. what, 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 what I was called an F. I Did you have more? It was, yeah, I think we, yeah, everybody has to wait for exactly. I mean, I'm trying to look back.